He again seduced his female clients and at least one was married and her relationship with Jonathan caused her to fall into a depression over her own guilt. But even this and that didn't end the downward spiral into hell, turning point from which he came to the day Jonathan manipulated and molested a friend closest to me in my life at the time. Words cannot convey how badly this hurt me. I felt betrayed. My best friend, my girl, had come to a criminal. The woman he molested couldn't handle this experiences. Her healer and friend had manipulated her and molested her, and you can't imagine how this did, what this did to her thinking. She called a suicide hotline, and she helped. She called the rape crisis hotline. She began a long series of bouts with deep depression and her car accidents and the hospitalized visits and more ending with a near-fatal car accident. It didn't stop there for her, either. She saw medical doctors and kept prescribing medication to numb what she was feeling. Later, the medications caused her to have seizures. She was hospitalized repeatedly and nearly died in an emergency room. At one point, she actually flat Lined. It was a horrible time. During it, Jonathan hid. He never offered help. He never apologized, and he disappeared from our lives. My girl had stabbed me and left me bleeding. The pain was beyond my words. I had to seek counseling for myself. Even to this day, memory still stings. It's the first time I'd write about the experience in such an opening way. By now, you should know that I tend to look at life's experiences as a symbol, and I wondered why this happened. And Jonathan became. Why did Jonathan become evil? Why did he hurt me and others who loved him? Well, what was the positive? in the negative. How could I turn this into something good? Well, I remembered reading a helpful passage from one of my favorite books, Breaking the Rules by Kurt Wright. It goes like this. Have you ever noticed how easy it is to look back on events that happened a year or more or two past to see the perfection in them? How most of the true events for the situations which seemed tragic, horrible, or even devastating at the time, now it seems possible for perfection of those things a year later? Doesn't it make sense that the perfection must be there in the moment it happens to? Wow, what a freeing statement. It causes you to look at the positive in everything and to look for it right now. So I turned into the light and situation with Jonathan, and all I could conclude from the gift of the freedom was over 10 years I have had turned with Jonathan, I needed help. Well, it's now time to me to be my own healer, my own best friend, my own guru. I was free. I felt better now than ever before, and I was grateful for Jonathan helping me during my time and of need, and I wish him well. Wherever he is, I no longer want to need of him in my life, and I am grateful for the time that we had together. As for my abused lady friend, she died on October 2nd, 2004. She never fully recovered from the betrayal, the pain, or the humiliation of her experiences with Jonathan. She tried to heal herself, and she tried to forgive him, but the last three years of her life she suffered. She only found peace and death. Meanwhile, my adventures continued in my life, and one of my magic miracles is how to stay clear and focus, as I'd work with several people these days to keep myself on track. Most of them are listed in the back of this book. There are other healers around, of course, and my advice is to true and trust your intuition. Now, trust your intuition and not become addicted to the healing or healer. The goal is freedom. The only path is your connection to spirit. So trust yourself. Chapter 12, The Experiment, Intentional Meditation Foundation. Will you join me in transforming the world? I'm looking for people all over the world to help lift the energy of the planet. With enough people practicing the attractor factor and using the meditation and plan I teach below, we can reduce crime, lower violence, raise the wealth and prosperity of everyone near us. When I was on the radio show one night, I announced my colossal plan to change the world. I was amazed to later hear that people in Africa, India, Ireland, New Zealand, Australia, and all over the United States are volunteering to help. I got the idea for this rather noble project while reading Permanent Peace, How to Stop Terrorism in War, Now and Forever by Robert Oates. The book reveals 19 scientific studies that proved when groups of people meditate the crime and violence in their area goes down. Oates writes, The basic idea is simply to state, like ripples on a pond, radiating outwards in a pebbleish pebble splash, ripples in the ordinance of the harmony radiated outward from the concentration groups of meditation experts. The evidence for this idea has been repeated and statistically significant, not only for the signs of social disorder go down, but violence and crimes, traffic accidents, warfare and terrorism, but signs of coherence and progress go up. Patent applications, for example, stock market levels, economic, economic indicators have all been shown to rise. Notice his last sentence. It suggests that Meditation helps increase wealth. With that in mind, I decided to create a global set of hubs where people learn how to meditate intentionally attracting wealth. The idea is the more that you help yourself, the more you also help those around you. And the more you help them, the more you help the planet. This is the noble purpose of Intentional Meditation Foundation. It's the profitable foundation designed to teach you specific med meditation techniques to people all over the globe. With the purpose of lowering violence and increasing wealth wherever it is practiced, at the core of the movement in 30-day event I'm calling the experiment. 
When I told a close friend that I planned to run a 30-day experiment, I seen a meditation could raise the prosperity level of the people meditating as well as influence everyone around them. She asked me something interesting. Do you care that you are running this experiment during a war when people are worried about their jobs? The next payday, they might even... Then their next payday, and maybe even their lives? Actually, that's why I'm running the experiments, experiment, I replied. This brief conversation intrigued me because, in her question, assume the outwards events to have control. On the contrary, your inner control, your, inner, your income doesn't have to be affected by a war, recessions, pay cuts, or layoffs. You don't have to be a victim of circumstances in my mind. Outward events are simply the result of what you have already done inside ourselves. I'll repeat that. Outward events are not simply the results of what we have already done inside ourselves. Maybe we attracted our current economical situation unconsciously, but we certainly attracted it. There's no right or wrong in the perspective. It simply is. Now, the really wonderful thing is that once you realize that you are the creator, you can create the kind of life you prefer. And that leads me to sub of this chapter. I'm asking for people to help me out in what I'm calling the experiment. This 30-day event is designed to bring out more money almost by magic. But only if you do three things. Number one, record where you are with your finances and then, with the experiment is over, record your changes. Meditate every 20 minutes using the technique I'm about to teach you. Number three, act on the insights that you receive and the opportunities that come your way afterwards. And that's it. Before I tell you the I am technique, let's cover a few basics to set stage for what is about to happen. Number one, you are the creator. Just as I pointed out, my friend, that you are the predominant creative force in your life, what is happening to you is being created by part by you. You are the one attracting it. This is the good news. It means that you can change those experiences to match the consciousness preferred. And it means that you can do, be, or have anything that you can imagine because the person responsible for anything of it is you. Number two, your belief creates your reality. And if you do this I am technique every day, you still will believe it won't work for you, and then it won't work for you. But you have to believe that change is possible. Believe rules. Intention is king. We are belief beings, and the results of belief creations change your lives and to change your life. And it will change your life. Number three, your feelings are the fuel. Your feelings are the fuel about beliefs, desires, hopes, and dreams. And when you worry about fueling the belief of negative outcome, when your faith and you are fueling your beliefs of positive outcomes, your feelings are the motivators for which help things happen. I believe without feeling is a thought. And with feeling, it's an intention. Number four is whatever you say after I am defines you. Whatever you say after I am defines you. Create of yourself and define yourself and ask yourselves, who am I? Pay attention to the answers. That is what we we're creating. Change the answers and you change your results. Now let's look at the I am process itself. I am stands for intentional meditation. Intentional meditation. Most meditation is not requested oriented. That is, meditation is simply quieting of the mind in and itself. And that is wonderful. I once had a t-shirt that read, meditation is not what you think. Exactly. If you're thinking, you're not meditating. Traditional meditation is beyond thinking. It's behind thinking. But intentional meditation is departure from traditional meditation. The I am method you are focused on specific outcomes is you are thinking and you are thinking with feeling as an I am is requested in the universe throughout the consciousness to intent to attract a particular result. In other words, traditional meditators would sit and simply watch their thoughts. That is the meditation from my t-shirt. Meditation is not what you think. It is a wonderful method. I encourage you to do it. The Beatles made up for my meditation popularity in the 60s called TM, Transcendental, Transcendental Meditation. In TM, you are given a mantra, a special phrase to repeat over and over again and you sit. The mantra keeps your mind busy so that you can be settled down and relax. The TM is powerful. When people use meditation to lower crime rates and reported in 19 separate studies in Oaks books, they were doing TM. IM is different. IM is focused on achieving a result. You go into the meditation with mental requests of feelings, which is amplifying into your meditation. In other words, an IM meditation might be something like this. I see myself at the end of a 30-day experiment with my business goals for the month I've achieved, and I'm feeling great smiling, maybe even singing or whistling. And as I'm feeling exhilarated, I have a magical attraction for more money easily and effortlessly. The statement is your intention. Your intention is what you use as a type of mantra in your meditation. Are you with me? I'll walk you through an IM method that helps make this clear for you. Number one, decide what you want to achieve. Make it believable to you. Remember, believe for your rules and don't believe that you can do it. You probably won't. Let it stretch and be honest with yourself too. Again, what you want to achieve and at the end of your 30 days, how much more business or income? Number two, write it down in one clear statement. For example, at the end of a 30-day experiment, I have an extra $15,000 in the bank from unexpected sources. Or maybe at the end of a 30-day experiment, I have 20 new clients. Write it down now. Number three, feel what it will take and what it will be like to achieve your intentions. If you've already had what you say you want, then you would not feel like now. What would that feel like now if you had what you say that you wanted? And get into those feelings. Relish them. Roll around in them. How would you look? How would you act? How would you smile? Feel the feeling right now. And that's it. In short, here it is again. 
You simply take into your intentions what you wrote down and what you want, and you take the feelings and if you're already having accomplished and feel the success now and spend 20 minutes a day soaking it up, pretending it's all happening now. And again, that's it. So how does your simple method work? How does it make your intentions come true? In short, you are putting in a request from some universe from which you're placing your order because you are clear about what you want and you feel you know what you want and you're streamlining that progress. The universe will hear you and it will begin to concentrate and orchestrate events to help you attract your intended desire. All you have to do is pay attention and act on your hunches and trust the process. As I mentioned earlier, 19 separate studies proved that meditation can lower crime rate. These studies were all about a form of transcendental meditation. In short, the meditators create a peaceful field which radiated over or calmed everyone, including many potential violent people. In the I am formula that I just described to you, you are quieting, you are quieting the mind as in a meditation, even merging all of which you have also been placing a request from the universe. That request will radiate each out and reach from which you can help in achieving it, from the magic that happens. I know much of you may seem strange, it might seem strange, and I'm calling it an experiment so that you can find it out with me just how powerful the system can be now if you want few more resources to help you understand this process here's some great ones number one sign up for mike dooley's notes from the universe at www.tut.com his messages will help you stay focused on your goals and they are free number two if you have trouble staying positive find a way to remove those blocks and get clear get an ebook on subjects by Stuart lichman and vote joe vitale yes me see www.anythingfast.com if you're interested in research about 19 studies for meditation lower crime, see the mini book version of the book Permanent Peace by Robert Oates. Number four, if you believe in difficult to get, if you believe it's difficult to get the money in your life, start a flow by giving money. That's right, give some away. This is an explained in my book, The Greatest Money Making Secret in History, available at www.amazon.com. Remember that what you have to do is number one is write down where you are in terms of your current income, and after the experiment, write down your results. Number two, meditate using the I am method 20 minutes every day. And number three, act on the impulses, ideas, and opportunities that come your way. And as easy as what? Is this easy or what? Yes, you can create and change your life. It all begins right now. Now, finally, more information included recent research case studies. If you're interested in hosting mediation hubs in your area, please see me at www.internationalmeditationfoundation.com. We must not make ourselves dependent on any particular form of wealth or insist on it coming to us through some particular channel. That is at once to impose a limitation and to shut out our other forms of wealth and to close other channels. But we must enter into the spirit of it. Judge Thomas Trowin, The Hidden Power, 1902. The Attractive Factor, five easy steps for creating wealth or anything else from the inside out. Joe Vitale.